how to write a perfect geography GCSE answer. Today we're going to look at a tectonic hazards question. To what extent are the impacts of tectonic events more severe in HICs, higher income countries, than LICs, lower income countries? Use named examples in your answer. Let's break this question down. The most important part of this question is to what extent. We know that this sort of question should be a nine mark question. It's going to ask us to make a judgment and evaluation at the end of the answer. We need to focus on looking at the impacts, we need specific tectonic events to look at, and we need to compare whether they're worse in HICs or in LICs, or are they about the same. To get four to six marks, you need to focus on demonstrating clear knowledge of the impacts of tectonic events, give some examples of management strategies that can reduce the tectonic event, and also talk about how important they might be. We're all going to be aiming for the level three, seven to nine marks. So remember here, you're going to give detailed knowledge, specific management strategies and how they reduce the event severity, and also come to a judgment about the importance of those management strategies in reducing severity in HICs or in LICs. For every single exam question that we've done in the past, we always sit down and go through breaking down the question very carefully first, making some notes before answering the question. This is really important for nine mark questions. Now in this case, you may want to use these two case study examples or some alternative ones. So you've got on the left hand side, your chosen event or location. So Japan, Tohoku earthquake and tsunami of 2011 and the Haiti earthquake of 2010. You could compare those two or an alternative high income and low income one. Write down some bullet points on what were the specific impacts and then write down some bullet points on whether you thought it was more severe in the HIC or in the LIC. And in this way, it will help you to structure your paragraphs that you're going to write in your answer later on. This is going to be excellent revision for you, particularly in the run up to a mock exam or the actual exam itself. So take the time to do this activity because you're going to remember the material a lot better if you're doing this. Let's have a look at this sample answer. To a large extent, the impacts of tectonic events are more severe in HICs such as Japan than LICs because HICs have invested in buildings and driven up land value while not putting as much of the budget into making them earthquake proof, whereas buildings in LICs are usually lower and won't fall as easily as skyscrapers would. The first thing to note about this paragraph is that it is a singular sentence. There are no breaks in between at all. So grammatically speaking, this is not a good way to outline your answer to start with. The second point to make here is that the candidate has talked about impacts of tectonic events, but has not actually talked about specific impacts. They may be alluding to buildings collapsing, but they're not actually referring to specific examples of impacts. There is just generalization about investment in buildings. The issue with land value is not really important for this question. The candidate starts talking about earthquake proof buildings, but doesn't talk about examples of what makes earthquake proof buildings what they are. So overall, this would not get many marks in the exam. If you wrote three paragraphs like this in the exam, you'd be struggling to get into a higher level mark. Earthquakes are more severe in HICs than LICs, not because the earthquakes are more dangerous. HICs are more densely populated, meaning that more people can die. HICs are located next to oceans and seas, meaning that if it is on a boundary, there will be a higher chance of a tsunami. HICs are often near water, as it is necessary for survival and important for trade. The opening sentence is a good start, but it's not specific enough. It would be better for the candidate to give some specific examples, for example, Japan or Haiti 2010, and talk about very briefly what made their respective earthquakes more severe. The second part of this answer HICs are more densely populated. This is now becoming a little bit too vague and too broad. The candidate makes a good supposition that densely populated areas will generally lead to more deaths. However, HICs tend to have management strategies in place which helps to protect people from getting affected or 
dying in the process. The idea that HICs are the only ones located to oceans and seas is not correct. The final sentence is not relevant to this question. So overall, again, this answer would get a low level mark. Next sample answer. The impacts of tectonic events can be more severe in HICs than LICs because there is more infrastructure that can be damaged. HICs have a higher population density, so a tectonic event can affect more people. Although the impacts of tectonic events may be more severe in HICs, it is also easier for them to recover, as there is probably an organised government with more funding. I think that overall the impacts on the HIC are slightly more severe than on an LIC. The first sentence is a good start to the answer of this question. However, if a candidate wants to get a level 3, 7 to 9 marks, then they've got to refer to a specific example in an HIC as well as an LIC. They make a good point about infrastructure being damaged. However, it would be even better if they refer to specific examples. This will help set the scene for the rest of the answer itself. In fact, if you refer to specific points that you're going to talk about in the rest of your answer, it shows the examiner what you're talking about, as well as giving them the lead of what they're going to be reading. They're more likely in that case to give you higher marks. The second sentence is very similar to the previous candidate's answer, again talking about high population density affecting more people. It's not true that population density is always the highest in HICs. In fact, there are lots of LIC capital cities and wider cities in those countries that have very high population density. Third sentence refers to tectonic events and the government being organized and therefore HICs are better able to deal with them. However, at this point, the candidate is still not talked about specific impacts that tectonic events have or how or why they're more severe in HICs. It should be noted that it's a correct statement to make that they have an easier job recovering because generally they tend to have a democratically elected government and they have systems and protocols in place to be able to make that happen. It would be even better if the candidate actually referred to an example perhaps contrasting with Japan, perhaps Haiti, where there wasn't really a functioning government in place or any systems in place to deal with catastrophic earthquake events. The final sentence, conclusion, is a broad statement which would have more meaning behind it if in the previous sentences or paragraphs the candidate had referred to specific impacts and how they were managed and what the differences between LICs and HICs were. In a general summary, this would not get very high level marks, might be able to get broadly into level two. However, spend the time, carefully think about how you would structure each paragraph before you start writing the answer as this will help you to lay out your arguments methodically, clearly, and establish really good points consistently throughout your answer. Let's go through this again with a general overview of level ones, two, and three. Level one answers are generally going to be quite broad, as you've seen in the previous answers. They may write things such as tectonic hazards are severe and HICs have a lot more damage to, M to manage than LICs, but don't actually refer to specific examples. They may refer to management are used to reduce the impacts of tectonic hazards, but then doesn't actually refer to anything in particular or specific. A level two answer will demonstrate clearer knowledge about the tectonic events. So in this case, the sentence may start with something like Japan's early warning system ensures that people are given text message in the event of an earthquake. So here I refer to the early warning system, that's something specific, and the fact that a text message is given to people to prepare. A level three answer, top level answer will be far more detailed. In this case, the candidate will have specific events that they refer to, as well as specific management strategies. But critically, the most important thing will be they'll come to a judgment at the end of their answer. And they'll say that, you know, to a large extent, HICs have got more severe events, but they're able to deal with these situations, whereas LICs 
may have similar levels of events in terms of Richter scale. However, because they don't have governance in place or they have protocols in place or reinforced buildings in place, they can't help to reduce the impacts. So a sentence may look like earthquake protection such as reinforced concrete columns, steel frames and shock absorbers in buildings and bridges help to reduce risks to property and life. To really emphasize this, remember a level one answer is too broad, not specific enough, don't give specific details and as a consequence it gets stuck between one to three marks. A level three answer on the other hand, specific case studies are referred to, specific management strategies are referred to but most importantly they come to a judgment and say that these things help to reduce the severity or help to increase it. Here's a paragraph for you to look at. In Japan, pre-planning such as an annual earthquake drills help to reduce the impacts of tectonic events as citizens know how to protect themselves. Alongside the delivery of an immediate earthquake warning by text message, these help to save lives and to reduce casualties. That would be an example of a really good paragraph to write for this answer. However, there's plenty more paragraphs that need to be written and also there needs to be a judgment made at the end of the answer for it to be able to get to a level 9. For the vast majority of 9 mark questions you're going to have to write a conclusion. So remember to go back to the original question and to answer that specifically. In this case the question starts with to what extent. This means that we need to make a judgment, we need to evaluate this question at the end. We need to say to a large extent or to a small extent the impacts are more or less severe in HICs or LICs. Remember, do use the words overall. Do use to a small extent or to a large extent. Don't just simply agree with a statement. Don't just mention some management strategies in your answer. Be specific in your referencing. Also, here's a, a sample sort of introductory line that you could put into your answer, which will help you to structure it. Let's break this down. Overall, I think that the impact of tectonic hazards have the greatest impact on HICs or LICs because, and then you would explain the reason for it. But I would encourage you to use words like despite and then mention something which is opposite or contrary to what you're referring to. For example, reducing damage to a specific area. And therefore, this would be a reason for why or why not an area would be impacted more severely or not. Ultimately, however you write, whatever your writing style is, you can only develop that if you are actually writing the answer to this question. So if you're watching this video and you've gone through the different samples before and you've not come to this slide or you're going to skip over this slide very, very quickly, this is the most critical and most important part of the answer itself. And getting this right will help you to move into a level three. Now, simply doing this is not going to get you into level three, but well-structured paragraphs previously with a well-structured and targeted conclusion will certainly help you to absolutely nail the level three answer. For those of you who've made it this far, well done. This is the most important part of this video. You've got to go away and write your own answer to this question. I cannot emphasize this more. If you're simply reading your textbook or you're simply making notes or you're just going to watch this video through, you're probably going to take away a few things, but you're not going to take much away. You've got to come back, answer this question, use your textbook if you have to, use your notes if you have to, but write your answer. Three part structure. One paragraph maybe for HICs, one paragraph for LICs, the conclusion. Then come back to the video, look at those sample answers, look at the mark scheme and try to understand how you can write better. It's no good or no use to you having watched this video not to actually do this question in itself. So make sure that you answer this question in logical steps, apply your knowledge and understanding and address the question clearly through a well-developed answer. This will help you a lot more than just general note taking for your exams or your mock exams or for your end of unit assessment or wherever it might be. Make sure that you answer the question because it will help you to revise and embed that knowledge and it will remain with you a lot longer. A question that I get asked a lot by students is, sir, I don't know how to write perfect answer. I don't know how to structure my answer. I don't understand what the examiner is looking for. You've got to go and write as often as possible. And this applies to any of your subjects, regardless of geography or not. You've got to learn to write in the right way. 
You've got to annotate the question before you start answering the question itself. If you're not sure how to write well, look at newspaper articles. You can get them online, go to a good newspaper that you would enjoy reading, go look at it, look at how they put their paragraphs and then try to copy their structure in helping you to write your answers too. Write in the third person. But the key thing is you've got to write with authority. You've got to write in a way that the examiner, when they look at your answer, they go, yeah, this person knows exactly what they're talking about. And one of the ways to do that simply is by writing clearly and neatly. So if your handwriting is not up to scratch or you still struggle to handwrite, you've got to practice because we're still doing exams by hand and typing has not been made compulsory across the board. So make sure that you do that and this will help you massively with not only geography but also with the other subjects too. More exam questions coming up next week but in the meantime make sure that you review your notes, do the exam question from here, rewrite your answer to it and obviously go back and look at the relevant parts of this video to recap to see where you can improve further. It's a continual process. If you've not watched my previous videos, go back and watch those. Do answer those questions too. There's a library that's building up now. And if you're doing this on a regular basis as we're going along every single week, then over time, by the end of the course, you're going to do really, really well.